Hi everyone, hope you're well. Today we are revisiting a game called Vigor. I covered this game when it came out back in July of 2018 and again about a year after that, but since then I've not really played it at all. But recently my two mates Tommy and Adam from Two Angry Gamers have been playing it on their stream and I've jumped in with them a few times as you can play trios. Long story short, the game has changed a bit and upgraded in the meantime and I've been having a lot of fun with it and I think there's something here. There's a lot of potential and I reckon we'll start to see many other games like this cropping up in the foreseeable future. If you don't know what it is, it's a free to play survival looter shooter made by Bohemia Interactive of Armour fame. And it's the love child of DayZ and Escape from Tarkov. Baby's first Tarkov is the moniker that we have assigned this game. You create your character, build up your base, go into a level, get as much loot as you can by either finding it around the world in airdrops or stealing it from other dead players. And then you attempt to extract from the mission alive before the radiation gets you. And if you die, you lose everything on that character unless you've insured it. And if you manage to extract with your loot, you can use it to upgrade your base further, which means you can craft better weapons, consumables, armor, airstrikes, etc. Some of the upgrades take real time to complete as well. And there are crates that you can craft, buy and open. And that's basically the gameplay loop. That's why we call it Baby's First Tarkov. But you don't really need to worry as much about the inventory management, the marketplace, or which ammo types can shoot through which pieces of armor. The gunplay itself is very reminiscent of original DayZ. High recoil weapons with incredibly quick time to kill. One hit kill headshots. You go down in a few bullets and there's no regenerating health without eating a consumable or using a bandage or antibiotics, etc. So the gunfights in tight buildings are chaotic, full of energy. And of course, if you haven't insured any of your gear with the prospect of losing it all, the stakes are high and your heart starts pounding. It can give you those type of feels. And of course, with this being a game where you have optional teammates and the map design offering a ton of verticality and cover, you can coordinate well with your team to flank opponents, provide covering fire, and do that cool special operator stuff that you see them do in the movies. And sometimes you don't even have to fight if you don't want to. You could just enter an encounter, loot as much stuff as you want, be sneaky beaky, but stealthy, and attempt to get to an extraction point without firing a bullet. Perhaps even get to an airdrop or booby trap it for unsuspecting victims. And there's also an element of exploration here too, as the loot is seemingly random. So you'll find yourself scurrying through abandoned town buildings, looking through drawers and fridges, cupboards, old cars for scraps. Occasionally, you might find a photograph that you can interact with and examine, showing you the rough location of a stash of epic loot that you can dig out of the ground. And as a new player, for me, who doesn't know these locations yet and refuses to look them up on the internet, I'm having a good time just trying to locate these stashes whilst attempting to survive at the same time. And if you've ever played DayZ or Tarkov, you'll know how good it feels to win a tense engagement. You get the last shot off whilst only having a few dregs of your health remaining. But you've been counting the kills and you know that you're the only group left in the server free to loot at your heart's content and extract at the last moment right before the radiation finishes you off unlike tarkov though there's no ai here it's just real people to fight and i think based on the size of the maps and the max player count of 12 this feels right perhaps adding ai would create too much chaos but it's certainly an interesting proposition for bigger maps and player counts should they go down that route in the future. I do have some reservations about the experience though and some improvements that would make the game better for me. And I think with a few tweaks, it could become incredibly popular. To start with, at the moment, the game is only available on console platforms, Xbox and Switch with crossplay enabled and PlayStation on its own. Not a big deal for the majority of gamers, but I'm of course primarily a PC player, so I'd love to try this on PC versus other PC players at some point, but I've got no idea if Bohemia have any intention of making that happen. We all remember how bad the hacking was on DayZ and Armour back in the day, and I think this is on the same engine, so maybe that's why they're just keeping it on console. Now I've been playing this on an Xbox Series X, that's all of the footage that you've seen today, and you may have noticed that it's only at 30 frames per second, and that's because that's the maximum frame rate of the game. And this can lead to a very unpleasant gaming experience at times for my taste, as gunfights do get very clunky at times, and the game feels like it has a lot of input lag. And when you combine this all together with the low frame rate, which is jarring on the eyes for a PvP third person shooter and feels pretty archaic in 2021. Controlling the guns and generally getting around under pressure can be painful at times so I'd love to see the frame rate increased to 60 for the consoles that can do that and also more refinement of the controls. Put that all together and you've got even more RNG elements in some of these player versus player engagements. 
And whilst you can aim down the sight of the gun if it's got a scope on it, or go to iron sights or the red dot when you're shooting, most of the time the game is third person only, and you can kind of aim and shoot in third person anyway, which means that you get the unavoidable camping forever, corner peeking playstyle while fighting in built up areas. But outside of blurring fields of view around corners or forcing first person modes, I'm not sure if much could be done about this, and it is just something that you have to accept as a player of a third person only game. It would definitely be interesting though and very intense to play this game on a forced first person only server though, something I'd like to try in the future if they ever do it. But with that said, the game is inherently fun for me at the moment, even with its shortcomings, and I'm enjoying the gameplay loops here. I really believe that with a few improvements to the core gameplay, performance and incentives to play in a team, Vigor could see great success beyond its current audience, and it makes me wonder with how popular these Tarkov raid style games are becoming with intense everything on the line PvP that feels like it matters and AI thrown into the mix too. It won't be long before one of the AAA shooters takes the formula, simplifies it, makes it addictive, makes it look good and run well. It's got the potential to just explode into the mainstream if that happens. There were rumours last week about a potential Tarkov style mode coming to Call of Duty Warzone of all things, but is there any truth to that i guess we'll just have to wait and see but it is a genre of gaming that i think is about to become incredibly popular either way let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below and if you've got a console you like the look of this give vigor a shot like i said it is free to play there's definitely some new experiences to be had here check it out if you've got some free time if you enjoyed this video leave a like thank you if you didn't like it dislike it subscribe for more and i'll see you in the next one wait so you're telling me that I have to go prone to use this M60. <laughs> oh, I wish I'd have known that. I bought 200 bullets for it as well. <laughs> you have to go prone. You have to go. You have to go prone with it to use it. That's all. Well, I'll be the scare factor then. I mean, I can just do this, like John Rambo. Ow! I mean, I'm behind you. That doesn't make any sense at all. I'm behind you. Why has that happened? No. I, I genuinely think there's ricochet. I think it hit this metal thing and got me. Was it the shell casing? No, it did quite a lot of damage to shell casing. Imagine if that had to kill you. <laughs> I think it's ricochet. I'm pretty sure it's ricochet. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven second reload. It's fast. You're going to have to go prone and just... I, I was... Why? He's dead, Jack. You want some of this, yeah? I'll give it you. Careful, it doesn't need to be firing at you for it to hurt you. I don't even need to aim at you. <laughs>